Hello, yogis. Thank you so much for joining me. I am honored and excited to practice with you. Today's class will focus on total body. So we'll do some balancing, we'll do some legs, some core. Um, for props, you'll maybe want to have two blocks, actually. <laughs> if you've got them. If you don't, no big deal. Uh, you could use books, you could even use a water bottle. Um, or we can make it work without blocks too. But I'll cue to them during some of the postures today, so you might want to have them handy. Um, and then just, as always, listen to your body. It'll tell you what it needs. Take breaks and modifications as necessary. This is your practice and this is your time. So let's get started right away at the back of your mat in child's pose. So draw your knees wide, create space for your torso, big toes to touch, and then fold forward. Soften your forehead and your palms into the mat. And then just begin to quiet your mind and arrive in your space. Leave everything else behind you. You've got nothing else to do and nowhere else to be except just here on your mat. Tune your attention inward toward your breath. As you breathe in, feel your belly inflate with air. And as you exhale, sink your hips a little closer to your heels. If you practice with an intention, feel free to bring that intention to the forefront of your mind. Intention's just a focus for class. It can be anything, just something you want to work on, maybe something that brought you to your mat today. My intention for this week is on the breath, just to breathe. When times get stressful, or hard, or difficult, I find it really helpful just to slow things down and turn my attention just to each breath. I encourage you to do the same as we flow today. Let's all take an inhale all together and a big open mouth exhale. Let it go like you're fogging up a mirror. Take another inhale. And one more exhale. Now seal up your lips. Take that same force of breath in and out through your nose. This is our ujjayi breath, our victorious breath, our breath of life. It's an important breath in our yoga practice because it'll bring some heat and some energy from within to help you get warmed up from the inside. And it also serves as a measure of movement from one posture to the next. On your next inhale, press weight into your palms, rise up to tabletop position. Stack your shoulders over your wrists, hips over your knees, and draw your belly button in and up towards your spine to engage your core. Inhale, cow pose, drop your belly, lift your head and tailbone, pull your heart through to the front of your space. Gaze forward. Exhale, cat pose, press into your palms, Arch your spine to the sky, gaze between your thighs. And we'll flow. Inhale, cow. And exhale, cat. We'll take it through a few times more to your own breath, your own pace. It's our first opportunity to flow breath to movement. So try to make your movement last as long as your breath. Your breath lasts as long as your movement. Almost as if you can't do one without the other. Take it one more time through. And then on your next inhale, return back to a neutral tabletop. Shift your hands two inches closer to the top of your mat. Tuck your toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. Press into your palms and send your hips high. Now for this first downward facing dog, feel free to keep a bend in your knees. And just focus on setting up the posture from your hands. So spread your fingers wide for a good base of support. Lengthen through your arms, biceps frame your ears. And then bend into both knees, send your tailbone a little bit higher. Feel length and elongation in your spine. And then you can try to soften your heels towards the mat, 
but that's not the main focus of this pose. So just try to keep the length in your spine, tailbone high. Awesome job. Inhale, gaze the top of your mat. Exhale, ragdoll forward fold, walk your feet behind your hands. Soften your knees, allow your head and neck to hang heavy. And then you can either grab for opposite elbows, sway side to side, or if it feels better to you, you can take a chest opener, interlace your fingers behind your low back, drive your knuckles towards the sky as you reach the crown of your head towards the mat. Just a little opportunity to warm up here. And then when you're ready, release your hands to the mat, shimmy your feet closer together. Inhale, halfway lift. Slide your hands up your shins. Long, tall spine. Crown of your head points towards the front of the room. And then exhale forward, fold. Inhale, mountain pose. Rise up, get big. Root down through all four corners of your feet. So press your feet firmly into the ground, center, your weight over top of your feet. So all of your joints are stacked above one another. Engage your quadriceps. To do that, lift your kneecaps up. Low belly pulls in and up. And relax your shoulders away from your ears. Breathe in. Exhale, forward fold. So hinge at your hips, soften your knees, and dive towards the mat. Send your tailbone high, crown of your head, draws to the mat. Inhale, halfway lift, long flat spine, maybe a little bend in your knees to make sure that you protect your hamstrings. Exhale, high plank, plant your hands to the mat and step back to the top of a push-up. Your shoulders stack over your wrists, ankles over your toes. Draw your low belly in and up towards your spine, so engage your core. A thing that might help you engage your core is to imagine that you draw your hands towards your feet and your feet towards your hands without actually moving them. So imagine that you pull them towards each other and you should feel your core start to light up. Firmly press the ground away from you and breathe. For five, four, three, two, one, inhale, rock forward from your toes so much that your shoulders come in front of your wrists. And exhale, slowly lower to the ground. Heart and hips arrive at the same time. Untuck your toes. Inhale, baby cobra pose. Peel your heart off the mat. Shine it forward. Press the tops of your feet into the mat. Little to no weight in your hands. Exhale, downward facing dog. Retuck your toes and then send your hips high. That's our sun A. We're gonna take that two times more breath to movement. I'll pick up the pace, but flow at your own breath, your own pace. Inhale, gaze the top of the mat. Exhale, travel there. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain pose. Nice job. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high plank. Inhale, rock forward. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Awesome job, one more time through. Inhale, gaze the top of the mat. Exhale, travel there. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain pose. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high plank. Inhale, rock forward. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, baby cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Nice job. Let's move on. Inhale, gaze the top of your mat. Exhale, travel there. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. Sit low, reach high. Now, chair pose is also called fierce pose. And if you've held this pose, you'll know why. 
sit low, reach high, rock your weight into your heels so much so that you could wiggle all 10 toes, and then draw your hips down and back like you're sitting back into a teeny tiny chair. If you take a peek down, you should be able to see the tops of your toes. Lift your chest, spiral your pinkies inward. Nice job. Breathe in, find a little bit more length in your spine. And on your exhale, sink a little bit deeper, just because you can. Awesome, awesome job. Inhale, and exhale, let it go. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high plank. Now from high plank, you have a couple options. I'm gonna cue to chaturanga from here on out in class, but you can also just go directly into your downward facing dog if that feels best in your body tonight. Otherwise, you can take chaturanga. To do that, from high plank, you inhale, shift forward, and then exhale, lower halfway. Hug your elbows in, 90 degree bend in your elbows. Everything's engaged here. And then we'll inhale into upward facing dog, flip over the tops of your feet, press your palms into the ground. Everything's lifted except the tops of your feet and your palms. And then we'll exhale into downward facing dog. So your choice, you're also welcome to drop down to both knees or one knee from your high plank and take chaturanga on your knees. Tons of options here, so make it work best for you. So again, from high plank, choose the option that you prefer that feels best to you and we'll flow. We'll meet in a downward facing dog. If you're with me, we'll do chaturanga. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, lower halfway chaturanga. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Nice job. Inhale, float your right leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Plant your foot between your palms. Inhale, warrior one. Ground down through your back foot, toes point out, and rise up. Now, anchor down through the outside edge of your back foot. As you sink deep, and allow your front knee to stack over your front ankle. Engage your left glute to open up your left hip flexor. And square your heart and hips to the front of the room as best you can. Breathe in. Exhale, warrior two. Open up to the left side of your space. Readjust your back foot so that it's parallel with the back edge of the mat. Maybe toes slightly turned in. You should have heel to heel or heel to arch alignment between the heel of your front foot with the arch or heel of your back foot. So sink deep into your lunge, arms spread wide, chest and hips open to the left side of your space. You've got this. Inhale, reverse warrior, flip your front palm to the sky, high five the back of the room. Now maintain your lunge, maybe even sink deeper. Gaze high, feel a side body stretch. Exhale, chaturanga, cart with your hands to the mat. Step back to your high plank and then go through your flow, whatever feels best to you, to find your way to downward facing dog. All right, other side. Inhale, float your left leg high. Now when we lift our leg, Try to keep your hips square. So almost imagine that you dial the pinky toe of your lifted foot towards the ground. That should help get your hip in line with the other hip. Exhale, low lunge, draw your knee into your chest, shoulders over your wrist, then plant your foot between your hands. Inhale, warrior one, ground down through your back foot, and then rise up. Again, press down firmly through the outside edge of your back foot. Sink your front knee over your front ankle. And on this side, engage your right glute to open up your right hip flexor. Again, square your heart and hips to the front of the room as best you can. Breathe in, reach your fingertips high. Nice job. Exhale, warrior two. Open up to the right side of your space. Readjust your feet. So back foot is parallel with the back edge of the mat. Maybe 30 degrees or so turned in. Just slightly sink deep into your lunge. Make sure your front knee tracks over your front foot. So you might find you have to encourage your front knee towards the baby toe edge of your front foot. 
arms spread wide, energy in your back hand to stack your shoulders over your hips. Strong gaze forward. Inhale, reverse warrior. Flip your front palm to the sky, high five the back of the room. Your back hand can gently slide down your back leg or you could tuck it behind you for a little bit more of a challenge. Sink deep. Exhale, chaturanga. Cart with your hands to the mat and then flow your way to downward facing dog. Nice job. That is our sun B. We're gonna take that two times more breath to movement. Again, I'll pick up the pace a bit, but flow at your own pace, your own breath. Inhale, gaze the top of the mat. Exhale, travel there. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, chaturanga. Move from your high to mid plank. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Nice job. Inhale, float your right leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, chaturanga. Cartwheel your hands to the mat and move through your flow. Whatever feels best to you we will meet in downward facing dog. Inhale, float your left leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, chaturanga. Step back and flow. We'll meet in downward facing dog. Nice job. All right, one more time through. Inhale, gaze the top of your mat. Exhale, travel there. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. Make it your deepest yet. Nice job. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, high plank, and then flow your way through your chaturanga, or however you want to get there, we'll meet in downward facing dog. Inhale, float your right leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Really feel a side body stretch. Exhale, chaturanga. Step back and flow. Last side. Inhale, float your left leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, warrior two. Inhale, reverse warrior. Exhale, chaturanga. Awesome, awesome job. You can take it or leave it. Maybe linger for a little bit longer in each of those postures. And then find your way to downward facing dog. Really nice job, super strong. All right, let's move on. Inhale, float your right leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Now listen for the change. Inhale, crescent lunge. So stay lifted on your back toes and rise up. So your back leg is straight and strong. You almost feel like you reach the sole of your left foot towards the space behind you while you pull your left hip towards the front of the room. So to pull your back leg nice and straight and strong. But if you feel any pain or pinching in your low back or tightness in your hamstring, you can bend your back knee to any amount. Just a little watch out. If you hover your back knee over the mat, that'll really kick up the intensity of this posture and make it a little bit of a quad burner. So you are fairly warned. Heart and hips shine forward. Draw your low belly in to protect your low back. Breathe in, reach your fingertips high. Clasp your palms together. Exhale, hinge forward. So think warrior three torso. Exhale, revolved crescent. So hands and prayer 
draw them to your heart, hook the outside of your left elbow over the outside of your right knee. Then active press your palms together, spiral your heart up to meet your thumbs, and then press the outside or back of your left hip towards the sky. And you can take in the option to drop down to your back knee and tuck your back toe. That'll add a little bit of stability and it'll also allow you to get deeper into the twist. So whatever is feeling best to you tonight, take that. We'll be here for two more breaths. You've got it. On each inhale, try to get a little bit more length in your spine. And on each exhale, twist a little deeper. Awesome, awesome job. Inhale, crescent lunge, stay low, rise up. Whew. Exhale, side angle pose. Find warrior two. And then with your right fingertips, reach forward, forward, forward as far as you can. And when you can't reach any further, you can tick-tock your arms to six and 12. Or you can release your right elbow, right forearm to your right knee. Choice is yours. Just choose the posture that allows you to keep maximum openness in your chest. Press down firmly through the outside edge of your back foot. Engage your glutes to sink your hips lower. Spiral your heart up towards the sky. Breathe in. Exhale, runner's lunge. Plant both hands to the inside of your right foot. Shimmy your right foot to the outer edge of the mat. You can stay here for an active runner's lunge, or I like to take the passive version, drop down to your back knee, and tuck your back toes. If you want a little bit more sensation in this stretch, and it feels okay in your body, you can drop down to your forearms. It's just an opportunity to recenter, refocus. If you've lost your breath connection, just take your attention gently inwards and notice each inhale and each exhale. Maybe take a couple open mouth exhales, release some heat, and then return to your strong inhales and exhales in and out through your nose. When you're ready, you can rise up to your palms, tuck your back toes, step your right foot back to meet your left, high plank, Sandwich your feet together. Inhale, side plank to the right. Drop your feet to the left. Sweep your right fingertips to the sky. With tons of options in the low body. You can drop down to your bottom knee. You can stagger your feet. You can stack your feet, or maybe even lift your top leg to the sky. The choice is yours. Wherever you are though, firmly press the ground away with your left hand and lift your hips to the sky. Most think rainbow shape in your side body. Breathe in, you've got this. Awesome, exhale, chaturanga. So return to a high plank and then flow your way to downward facing dog. Beautiful, other side. Inhale, float your left leg high. Exhale, low lunge. Inhale, crescent lunge. So stay lifted on your back toes and rise up. Now again, drive through your back leg straight and strong if that feels okay to you. Or you can bend your back knee to any amount. Although fair warning, if you hover your knee, you'll really, you'll really be feeling it. So choose what works best for you. You also can widen your stance. So shimmy your front foot out a little bit. Think railroad track your feet instead of balance beam if you're feeling a little wobbly here. Now once you've found your spot, sink deep, draw your low belly in, reach your fingertips high. Breathe in, place your palms together, exhale, hinge forward, so warrior three torso, breathe in, Exhale, revolve crescent. Draw your hands to heart center in prayer, and then hook the outside of your right elbow over the outside of your left knee. Spiral your heart up to meet your thumbs, and then on this side, press the back of your right hip towards the sky. 
Now this is to isolate the twist in your mid thoracic spine. So it almost feels like you're twisting your hips in the opposite direction that you're twisting your upper body. And you have that option to drop down to your back knee. Choice is yours. One more breath here. Inhale, crescent lunge. Stay low, rise up, you've got this. Exhale, side angle. Find warrior two. And then with your left fingertips, reach forward, forward, forward. When you can't reach any further, tick-tock your arms or place your forearm on your left knee. Choice is yours. Actively press down through the back edge of your back foot and engage your glutes to sink your hips low. So hips lower than heart. Spiral your heart up to the sky. Maybe gaze up to your top hand as you inhale. Exhale, runner's lunge. Plant both hands to the inside of your left foot. Shimmy your left foot to the outer edge of the mat. You can stay here or you can drop down to your back knee and untuck your back toes. We'll take a couple breaths here just to reset, refocus. Remember why you showed up to your mat tonight. Maybe focus on the breath and slow things down. If it feels best, to drop down to your forms, you can do that. But really check in with yourself. Sometimes it's better just to have a gentle practice, just kind of more restorative. And other times it feels best to just charge into things and have a energetic, strong practice. So what are you feeling? And make it work best for you. Ready, press weight into both hands. Tuck your back toes. Step your left foot back to meet your right. High plank, sandwich your feet together. Inhale, side plank to the left. Drop your feet to the right. Sweep your left fingertips to the sky. Same options in your low body. So take what feels best to you. Press the ground away firmly with your right hand. As you lift your hips up to the sky, engage your side bodies, get a little bit more height, breathe in, exhale, chaturanga. Slowly move through your flow. Inhale, upward facing dog, if you're taking that option. And exhale into downward facing dog. Awesome job. Inhale, get to the top of your mat. Exhale, travel there. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, chair pose. Exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, hinge forward. Exhale, prayer twist on the right. So hook the outside of your left elbow over the outside of your right knee. Now because we're in chair, rock weight into your heels. And because we're twisting, take a peek down at your knees, make sure they're in line with one another. And then same here in the upper body as a revolved crescent, actively press your palms together, spiral your heart up to your thumbs. Breathe in, find a little bit more length in your spine. And exhale, twist a little deeper, sink a little deeper. Nice job. Inhale, chair pose, stay low. Last little bit here. Exhale, hands to heart center. You've got this. Inhale, hinge forward. Exhale, prayer twist on the left. Hook the outside of your right elbow over the outside of your left thigh. Again, rock weight into your heels. Take a peek down, check in with your knees. Make sure they're in line with one another. And then again, inhale, find length in your spine. And as you exhale, sink a little deeper, twist a little deeper. You've got this. Inhale, chair pose, our very last of class. Last little bit here. And exhale, forward fold release. Oof. It's a lot of work on our quads. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, malasana, our yogi squat. Step your feet wide to the edges of your mat, toes out, heels in, and then sink your bottom to the ground. 
a little bit of a release here. If this doesn't feel okay to you, you can always sit on a block if you've got one and rise up a little bit. Otherwise, draw your hands together at heart center. Actively press the outsides of your triceps into the insides of your knees. Open up your hips, sit a little bit taller. And you're welcome to stay here in Malasana, or if crow pose is in your practice, I'll give you a little demo of that and give you some time to take that. Otherwise, just stay in Malasana. Hang out here, maybe rock side to side. If you're taking crow, spread your fingers wide for a good base of support. Stamp them on the mat in front of your shoulders. And then rise up to your tiptoes. Snuggle your knees into your armpits. Gaze about a foot or two in front of your mat. This is key. And then slowly begin to lean forward, bend into your elbows. Engage your core, lift one foot, lift the other, big toes to touch. And just hang out. If you're not wanting to take crow, again, you can stay in Malasana. But I do encourage you to give it a try. It's an opportunity to find fun and playfulness in our yoga practice. You can always just rock back and forth, trying to get comfortable with it. If you've got a yoga block, you can take a yoga block and you can place it beneath your forehead to give yourself a little support and to take out that fear of falling because you are supported. So that can be a really great place to use a block. So again, give it a try. When you've had enough of crow, and you've had enough of molasana, you can find your way back to child's pose of the back of our mat, where we began class. Knees wide, big toes to touch, and then fold forward. Check in with yourself. Notice how this child's pose might feel different from our first child's pose. Maybe your hips are a little bit more open. Maybe your shoulders are more open. You can sink your heart a little closer to the ground. In with your breath. Is it fast and shallow? Can you slow it down and deepen it? And recall your intention. Remember why you showed up on the mat tonight. When you're ready, press weight into your palms, transition through tabletop and exhale into downward facing dog. Inhale, gaze the top of your mat. Exhale, travel there. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain pose. Get big, rise up. Have an exhale, let it go. And then inhale, one-legged mountain pose on the right. So root down through your left foot as you lift your right knee to hip height. Keep your core engaged, keep your knee at hip height and flex your right toes towards your face. Breathe in, reach your fingertips high. And then exhale, open up your hip to the side. So I'll turn to face you. Open up your hip to the side. So really focus on the opening of your hip. And then inhale, tree pose. So you can place your foot on the inside of your left leg, either above or below your knee. You can also kickstand your toes for a little bit more support. The height and placement of your foot isn't as important as the ability to find openness in your hips. So choose the placement that works best for you. And then when you found it, actively press your right foot into your left leg. Open up your hips. You can leave your hands at heart center, or maybe you can take your arms above your head, grow your branches. We'll take a couple breaths here. 
Just find some stillness. Maybe bring a smile to your face, like a happy little tree. Breathe in. And then on your exhale, release your foot. Keep your foot lifted though and find your way back to one-legged mountain pose. Breathe in here. Exhale, airplane pose. So without dropping your foot, kick your foot, your right foot behind your body. So you pendulum your body, sp sweep your arms alongside you, spiral your palms towards the ground. You can bend your standing leg to any amount. That might help to find a little bit more stability. And float your right heel towards the sky. Dial your right hip down in line with your left. And then shine your heart forward, your chest forward, like in Baby Cobra. Breathe here, you've got this. And then on your next inhale, slowly float back to Warrior Two. Nice job. So arms spread wide, energy in your backhand, and sink deep. Feel strong and supported in your warrior too. And then straighten your left leg. Exhale, triangle pose. Bump your hips behind you and then reach your left fingertips forward, forward, forward. And when you can't reach them anymore, you can tick-tock your arms to six and 12. This is another pose where it's great to have a block. The focus should be more on feeling a nice stretch in your hamstring, but not too intense. So keep a bend, a micro bend in your left leg. And it's not necessarily important to be able to touch the ground. If you don't have a block though, you can place your left hand on your left shin. Then press the ground away firmly with both feet. Press your hips forward as you peel your heart and head back. Gaze high. Breathe in. And exhale, side angle pose. So just bend into your front knee. Keep your torso the way it is. Now stretch your left fingertips towards the ground. It's okay if they don't quite get there. Again, you can use the block or just let them hover. And you can even take the option that I mentioned earlier with your left forearm up on your left knee. Focus on spiraling your heart up towards the sky. Feel open and expansive in your chest. Sink your hips low. And then take your gaze towards your left foot. Place your left fingertips just in front of your left foot, maybe a little bit outside it. So we're headed to half moon. So believe in yourself, trust yourself. A little bit of a, a kick here to get us up into half moon. And I know you can do it. So gaze down, shift weight into your left foot and your left fingertips or hand. Now if you've got a block, you could also use the block here. So tons of options. So gaze down, shift weight, and then believe in yourself, inhale, kick your right leg to the sky. You can place your right hand on your hip. And you can also reach your right hand towards the sky. Choice is yours. Your hips and your heart are open to the right side of your room. Focus on the stretch in your standing leg. Engage your quadricep of your left leg. So lift your left kneecap up. And then if you're having difficulty with the balance, almost imagine that your leg, your lifted leg and your torso are kind of like a pole for like someone on a, a tightrope walker. So if you're feeling yourself 
falling forward, just stretch your lifted foot back behind you to bring your center of balance back over your standing leg. Breathe in, you've got this. And then exhale into warrior three. So one last little balancing bit. So drop your right hip in line with your left. Reach your left fingertips up. I'm gonna scooch back so I have more room. Reach your left fingertips and your left and your right fingertips in front of you. Palms together. So this is the same torso we took in crescent lunge. Stretch your right heel behind you as you reach your fingers forward. You've got this, breathe in. And then exhale, grounded airplane. Release your hands to the mat, hips square. Keep your right foot lifted if you can. Breathe in, awesome job. Exhale, jiva squat. Chamfer your right knee behind your left leg as you sink down, so one-legged squat. So you can keep your hands on the ground to help bear some of the weight. And then inhale, rise up. Grounded airplane, kick your right foot out behind you. We'll do that two times more. If you wanna kick it up, you can take your hands to heart center as we flow through our jiva squat, or keep your hands grounded, either works. So ready, breathe in. Exhale, jiva squat. Inhale, grounded airplane. One more time. Exhale, jiva squat. Inhale, grounded airplane. Exhale, forward fold. Whew. That was a lot of work on our standing leg. Fold forward, release your head and neck. Maybe sway from side to side. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain pose. Whew. Exhale. Release your hands to the side. Just standing mountain, arms release. Give your shoulders a little bit of a break. Maybe shake it out a little bit. And we'll do the other side. When you're ready, inhale, sweep your hands to the sky. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, one-legged mountain. This time, lift your right, your left knee to hip height. Find three 90-degree bends in your lifted leg at your hip, knee, and ankle. Root down firmly through your standing leg. Engage your right glute to help with balance. Reach your fingertips high. And then exhale, I'll turn to face you. Open up your hip and inhale, tree pose. So again, place your foot, your left foot to the inside of your right leg. I recommend that you mirror the placement you took on the other side. And you found your spot, actively press your left foot into your right leg. Engage your glutes to help with balance and open up your hip a little bit more. You can leave your hands where they are. You can lift your arms or you can find some other variation that works for you. You can also take a chest opener. You can interlace your hands behind your low back. Drive your knuckles to the ground as you lift your heart to the sky. Maybe bring a smile to your face. The first half was tough. We've got one last side, and then we'll head to the ground. Breathe in. Find your way back to one-legged mountain pose. Keep your left foot lifted. Exhale, airplane pose. Slowly pendulum your body. Kick your left foot behind you. Swoop your arms alongside you. You can bend your standing leg to any amount. That'll help with balance. Float your left heel high. Dial your left hip in line with your right and shine your heart forward like in baby cobra. Breathe in 
And then exhale, slowly float your left leg back to land in warrior two. Gonna turn and face you. So in warrior two, arms spread wide, hips and chest open to the side of the room, sink deep into your front knee. Exhale, triangle pose, straighten your right leg, bump your hips behind you, and then reach your right fingertips forward, forward, forward. Tick tock your arms to six and 12. Again, doesn't matter if you can touch the ground. It's not the focus here. Try to keep your chest open and feel a nice stretch in your hamstring. So keep a micro bend in your right knee to protect your hamstring from overextending. Press the ground away firmly with both feet. Lift your heart up to the ceiling. Relax your shoulders down your back. Breathe in. Exhale, side angle pose. So just bend into your front knee. Right fingertips can release down to the ground or you have the option to rise up to your right forearm, your right knee. Or if you've got a block, that works too. Tons of options, so make it work best for you. Remember, sink your hips low, peel your heart up towards the sky. Breathe in, now you know where we're going. So take a peek down at your right foot, place your right fingertips above and slightly to the outside of your right foot. And trust yourself. Breathe in, let it go. Inhale, half moon. So launch forward, lift your left leg to the sky, left fingertips reach high, or you can place them on your hip if that works better in your body. You can place your right hands on the ground or on a block if you've got one. Focus on feeling a stretch in your standing leg Engage your quadricep of your standing leg. Lift your right kneecap up. Try to make sure your left knee is, placing, is pointing straight out to the side of the room. You've got it. Breathe in. Exhale, warrior three. So slowly close down your hips. Draw your left hip in line with your right you reach both hands forward, palms together. Stretch yourself out, T-shape in your body. Breathe in. Awesome job. Exhale, grounded airplane, both hands to the mat. Keep your left foot lifted, heart lifted. And then we'll do that Jiva squat. So breathe in. Exhale, Jiva squat. Snake your left knee behind your right leg as you sink down. You can keep your hands grounded for a little bit more support and stability, or you can bring your hands to heart center. Inhale, grounded airplane. Two more times. Exhale, Jiva squat. Inhale, grounded airplane. Last time. Exhale, Jiva squat. Inhale, grounded airplane. Whew. Exhale, forward fold, release your left foot to meet your right. And then let your head and neck hang heavy. Maybe shake from side to side. Maybe even shake, shimmy out your legs. Let it all go. We are done with that. You did awesome. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, mountain pose. Exhale, forward fold. I'll step back to a high plank. If you wanna take a last vinyasa, you're welcome to do that. Or you can just stay here in your high plank. And then slowly on your exhale, release down towards the mat. Find your way into Sphinx Pose. 
parallel your arms, elbows underneath your shoulders, tops of your feet, place on the mat, and then engage your glutes and pull your heart through to the front of the room. So a little bit of a back bend here. Should feel pretty comfortable. If you wanna take this a little further, you can take seal pose. So leave your elbows where they are, still stacked underneath your shoulders, but then pivot your palms to each corner of your mat. And straighten your arms. And continue to keep engaging your glutes. It should feel like a little bit more intense of a back bend. If it's too intense, you can always back down and find your way to Sphinx. Awesome job. Tuck your toes. From Sphinx pose, inhale, rise up to forearm plank. Shoulders stack over elbows, ankles over toes. Engage your core. Again, think about that sensation of pulling your elbows towards your feet and your feet towards your elbows to help keep your core engaged. Breathe in. You've got this. Five, four, three, two, one. Inhale, rise up to high plank. And we'll take a couple walking planks. And then we'll move into the good stuff. So by walking planks, I mean on the exhale, drop down to your forearm plank. And on the inhale, rise up to high plank. So we'll do that two more times. Exhale, forearm plank. Try to keep your hips level. Inhale, high plank. One more time. Exhale, forearm plank. And inhale, high plank. Awesome job. Drop your knees to the mat and press back into a child's pose. Flip over onto your back. Stamp the soles of your feet to the mat. And then release down to the ground. The slower you go, a little bit more core engagement you get. And then when you've settled into the mat, reach your arms alongside your body. Step your feet in closer to your bottom, so much so that your fingertips graze your heels. Inhale, bridge pose. Press your feet into the ground, lift your hips to the sky. Now snuggle your shoulder blades beneath your body. Option to interlace your fingers behind your low back and drive your arms into the mat. Lift your chest towards your chin, but your chin away from your chest. Breathe in, lift your hips a little higher. Exhale, let it go. Slowly release the grip if you took it and lower down one vertebrae at a time, hips last to arrive. Breathe in. Exhale, Supta Baddha Konasana. Kiss the soles of your feet together. Allow your knees to splay out wide. And place one hand on your belly, one hand on your heart. And just breathe. Use this as an opportunity to check in with yourself. Notice your breath. Is it fast and shallow? Can you slow it down and lengthen it? Feel the rise and fall of your belly with each inhale and each exhale. When you're ready, you can place your hands beneath your thighs and gently close your legs together like you're closing the pages of a book. Draw your knees into your chest. Maybe give yourself a little bit of a massage here. Circle your knees in one direction and circle them in the other. And stamp your soles of your feet back on the mat. We'll take a supine figure four. So on the right first. So lift your right ankle and cross it over your left thigh. Your legs make kind of a figure four shape. 
And this might be enough. You can hang out here, maybe gently press your right hand into the center of your right thigh and kind of gently press it away from you. If you're wanting a little bit more, you can take your right hand, reach it between the space created by your legs and either capture your left hamstring or your left shin. Draw your left leg in towards your body. Keep your lower back connected with the mat and just breathe here. Release your left foot back down towards the mat. Right foot back to the mat, and we'll take it on the other side. So lift your left ankle, and cross it over your right knee. Again, you have the option to stay right here. You can gently press your left hand into the center of your left thigh, and gently press it away. We're winding class down, so don't force anything. Just slow down your breathing. I mean, you can stay right here, but if you're wanting a little bit more, you can reach your left hand between the space created by your legs and capture your right hamstring or your right shin. Whatever feels best to you. Now draw your low back down into the ground as you pull your right leg, your right knee in towards your body. Feel a stretch here. Take a couple breaths. And then gently release both feet towards the mat. Last little bit here. Extend your left leg long to ground your left calf and left heel on the mat, leg is long. Draw your right knee in towards your body. Give it a squeeze up around your rib cage. Breathe in. Exhale, supine twist. Draw your right knee across your body, drop it towards the left. Now tee out your arms. Melt your shoulder blades into the mat. So more important is to make sure that both shoulder blades are firmly grounded in the mat. More important than making sure that your right knee touches the mat. And if it feels okay to you, you can take your gaze over your right shoulder. If you need a little bit more support, or if it would feel better to have a little bit more support, you can draw your left knee up underneath your right, almost creating a pillow for your right knee. You can just be gentle, and listen to your body. And then return to center. Swap out your legs, right leg long to ground your right calf, right heel into the mat. Draw your left knee in towards your body. Give your left knee a squeeze up around your rib cage. Breathe in. Exhale, supine twist. Draw your left knee across your body. Drop it towards the right. Tee out your arms, melt your shoulder blades into the mat. And again, you have that option to find a little bit more support for your left knee. You can draw your right knee up underneath it. Choice is yours. And if it feels okay in your body, you can take your gaze over your left shoulder. Just be careful of your neck. Inhale, return to center. Draw both knees into your chest. Open your knees up wide. Exhale, happy baby pose. Stamp the soles of your feet on the space above you. Reach for the outsides or the insides of your feet. Kind of hug your knees in towards your body. 
include the entire length of your spine into the mat, especially your low back. Sometimes our low back has a tendency to pop up in this position. So try to press your low back towards the mat. And it might help to lower your hands towards your ankles, your shins, or maybe even your hamstrings, just to keep that low back connection. Once you've found the spot that works best for you, find any last little movement your body is calling for. Maybe sway from side to side. Maybe straighten one leg. Get a little bit of a hamstring stretch in there. You've worked your legs hard. And then stretch your other leg straight. And then when you're ready, draw both knees into your chest. Lift your forehead to meet your knees. Give yourself a big, tight squeeze. Breathe in. Exhale, Shavasana, our final resting pose. Extend your arms and legs. Get big, take up space. Take an inhale and a big open mouth exhale. Let go of any tension. And let go of your breath. Let it run wild and do its thing. Allow your feet to flop out to the sides. Relax all the muscles in your legs. They have worked so hard. Give them a break. And just soak in the benefits of your practice in this moment of stillness. Snuggle your shoulder blades beneath your body to melt your shoulders into the mat. you to stay here as long as you are able to unfortunately this is where I leave you stay as long as you would like I highly recommend it thank yourself for showing up for doing this practice for doing the work thank yourself for investing in yourself it was a hard hard class and you did a wonderful job very honored to be on this journey with you. Thank you so much for trusting me and thank you for practicing with me. Wonderful, amazing job with love and gratitude. Namaste.